Welcome everybody, Saturday morning Arabic. Um, it's just a couple people on their way in right now. Okay, and let's get to it. So we are still in the same lesson. We're making very good progress, alhamdulillah. Um, the next exercise is reinforcing the main grammatical concept of this lesson. It says, اقرأ المثال الآتية ثم حول جمل الآتية مثله Read the example. Uh, read the example, the following example. Then we're going to transform the following sentence upon the pattern of the example. So, going from left to right, because I know that we're English speakers. What we're moving from is the grammatical formula, Hada Kitabun. Right? This is a book. And we're moving the kitab to the mubtada. In this sentence right here, it's in the khabar. Now we're going to move it into the mubtada to speak about this specific book. And we're going to say something else about it. Okay. In this particular case, we're going to say who it belongs to. Hadal kitabu li Muhammadin. This book belongs to Muhammad, right? And so now they're going to arrange it right to left, and this is how we're going to see the remainder of the exercise. The, we're going to see a sample sentence on the right, هذا kitabun, a very, very basic sentence. And we're going to take that example and make a little bit more complicated sentence. هذا الكتاب لمحمدين. Don't worry, you're not going to have to figure out what the khabar is. They're going to provide it for you. All you're going to have to do is switch from هذا طبيبون, having طبيب be part of the khabar, which is nakira, which does not have alif lam, and we're going to move it into the mubtada. We're going to put alif lam on it. We're going to remove one dhamma from it and complete the sentence. So let's begin. First on my list is the are the Sayyids. Someone from the Sayyid family, please do number one. Read the one on the right and then, yeah. Okay. Haza uh, bun. Good. Haza bu minal hindi. Very good. Excellent. So listen to how she said, Haza bun. And then she said, Haza bu minal hindi. Because now we've added a, uh, an alif lam to it. And just for good measure, go ahead and translate that for us. This is a doctor. Uh, the doctor is from India. Yes, fantastic. Great job. That's what we're doing. Okay, Brother Mohsen, could you do the following one? Sure. Hadihi sayyaratun. Hadihi sayyaratu lil mudirin. Oh, li mudirin. Mudiri. Oh, Mudiri, sorry. Good job. Let's translate that for us. Uh, this is a car. This car belongs to um, Mudiri, is principal. Yes, the principal. Very good. Excellent. It's tricky to recognize. Okay, so, uh, you know, what Brother Mustan said there wasn't just a slip of the tongue. There's something going on here that makes this difficult. We'll talk about it in just a second. So, Havi he sayaratun. This is a car. Hadihi sayaratu. Look at how we put it into the mubtada. Now it's part of the mubtada, and so it's going to be marifa with an alif lam. It's going to lose one dhamma because it has the alif lam. Lil mudiri. Ah, ah, ah. So, what's happening here? Which I don't think that we've studied or learned or pointed out before is. If we 
remember our previous example. We've only done the possessive li, lam al mulkiya, with names, I believe, up until this point. Li plus Muhammad equals li Muhammadin. Very simple. However, what do we do when we add the lam al mulkiya to a common noun? El Mudir, right? This is the problem that's posed here. El Mudir, we have a Hamza al Wasl and then a lamb. Do we add a lamb way out here? How would we pronounce it? This gives us our answer. We add, we basically eliminate the Hamza al Wasl and just have two lambs next to each other. Lil. Mudiri. Why do we eliminate the Hamza al wasl Because it's redundant. We wouldn't even pronounce it anyway. If for, just for the sake of argument, if we were going to write it this way, li and then a Hamza al wasl and then a lam with a sukun, how would we pronounce that? We would pronounce it lil mudiri. So, in order to avoid having a silent letter in there, we're just going to eliminate it entirely. And we're going to put two lambs next to each other. The first one has a kesra. That's the lamb of possession. The second one is left over from El Mudiri. And re recall, for those of you interested in the debate, whether the definite particle was alif lamb or just lamb, now we have a further piece of evidence supporting the idea that it is simply just lem, because now the Hamza Tawassal has gone away. Does this happen in the Mus'haf as well? Yes, it does. Yes. Good question. Good. So, هَذِهِ السَّيَارَةُ لِلْمُدِيرِ This is the, uh, this car is the principles. Very good. Uh, Sister Masarat, could you please do number three? ذلك ولد ذلك ولد ذلك 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 الولد ذلك الولد بن المدرس. Very good. Translate that for us. That's a boy. That's a boy. And the boy is the son of the teacher. Yes, that. Boy is the teacher's son. Oh, sorry, sorry. That boy is the son of the teacher. Fantastic. Now, I'll ask you a further question just for a little bit of review. How did you know that Ibn, that Ibn had a Dhamma on it? How did you know that it was Ibnu? Uh, because it's the possessive construction. Well, it's actually the uh, Mubtada. And so it's originally Dhamma because of that. And then the... Uh, the mudaris the the mudaris gets the kasra because of the possessive construction. Okay, mashallah. So, uh, poor masarat, I, I pick on her a little bit. Where is the where is the differentiation? I'm going to draw a line here in this sentence. Where does the mubtada stop and the khabar begin? Uh, the mubtada is the uh, well. Uh, you mean the first one or the second one? Um, uh, yes, in the second part. In the second one, it's Dalikal uh, Walad is the Muqtada, and then wh what about him? He's the son of the teacher, that's the uh, the Khabar. Fantastic. So then, then I'll ask you again, why is Ibn with the Dhamma? It's the Khabar. Yes, it's the Khabar. Maybe you misspoke. You said it's because it's part of the Muqtada. Oh, I'm sorry. No problem. Okay. No worries. I was, think, I was thinking Khabar. No problem. I just wanted to make sure everybody understood. And it's a very good thing to review that it's Bamma because of the, it's part of the Khabar. And the original grammatical case of the Khabar is Marpur with a Bamma. And so, yes, it's part of the possessive construction, but that doesn't really affect whether it has a Bamma or a Kesra. What that does affect is the second word over here, Al Mudarrisi which has a kasva, as, uh, as she said. So, and there's a lot of slick phonetic things going on there. She handled it very well. 
have to run the Dal in Al Waladu into Ibn and run Ibn into Al Mudarrisi. Yes, Ibn is Mudaf. And being Mudaf affects its definiteness. It makes it definite, but it does not affect whether it has a Dhamma or not. What does affect the Dhamma is that it is part of the Khabar, the predicate. Very good. Brother Asim, can you do number four for us? Sure. Tilka Sa'atun. And then it becomes Tilka Sa'atu min Suisra. Very good. Turn it back for us. Um, that is a watch. And then it becomes that watch is from Switzerland. Fantastic. Excellent work. And Swiss law is mebni, as we said, it's indeclinable, which is why even though it comes after min, it's always going to be Swiss law, just like Amrika and so on and so forth. Good. Brother Mohammed Mu'tasim, can you please do number five? Hadal, hadal baitun. Good. And the second part? Hadal baitu al muhandisi. MashaAllah. Very good. Translate that for us. Uh, this, this house, this, this, this is the house. Yes. This house is, uh, belongs to the engineer. Excellent. Good job. Hada baytun. This is a house. And then hada baytu. This house is the engineers or belongs to the engineer. Fantastic. Good job. Uh, moving on to the Sheikh family, number six. Has a Khalamun, has a Khalamu, Li Abbasin. Good, excellent work. Translate that for us. This is a pen. This pen belongs to Abbas. And this is a pen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Uh, Dr. Zia, number seven, please. Zalika Rajlun. Zalikal Rajalu Muazini. I especially love the couples because then we get to hear them correct each other. So is it Muazini or Muazinun? And why? Muazini. No, sorry. Zalika Rajalu Muazini. Very good. Okay. We have a, a difference of opinion between the husband and wife. Okay, so let's let's break it down from the beginning. The type of sentence is Jumla Ismiya or Jumla Fi'liya? Ismiya. Ismiya, okay, good. Ismiya, what are the two parts of Jumla Ismiya? Muqtada Khabar. Muqtada Khabar. What's the default grammatical case of both the Muqtada and the Khabar? Dhamma. With Maqtada. Yes, exactly. Uh, so here's our line here. This is the mubtada. Here's the khabar. We need something in the sentence. If we're going to make anything majroor, there has to be something to make it majroor. Is there anything in the sentence to make it majroor? Uh, no. No, there's not. Dali. No, there is no. Uh, there's no lamb. There's no mudaf mudaf ilay. There's no possessive construction. There's no uh, min or ila or anything. And so, chalk one up for uh, one point for Sister Asma. It is mu'adhinun. Mu'adhinun. What they did to you is they tricked you because every single example before this, every single example before this has something that makes the end word in the khabar majroor. Yet, yet, this one doesn't. Because it's not a necessity to this type of sentence. It's still a jumla ismiya. What are we saying here? What's the translation of this sentence? Uh, uh, this man is a muazin. Yes, exactly. It's a, very, it's a statement of identity. That man is a muazin, is a caller to prayer. And so... It's a simple mubtada khabar. We have two words in the mubtada, one word in the khabar, and it doesn't get any more complicated than that. 
So don't feel bad. They tricked you. Excellent work. Uh, Brother Muhammad Tariq, could you please do number eight? Can you see it there in the bottom of the screen? Baizatun. Good. Kabir Kabiratun. Hazal Baiti Kabirati. Okay, so the first one was Hadihi Bayabati. Hazihi Baizatun Kabira Kabiratun. Hazihil Hazihi Bayzati Kabir Kabirati. I don't see a Kabira over here on the right on the right column. It's just Baidatun. Yeah. He's a Hazihi Bayzatun. Right. Yeah. Right. So that sentence is the easy one because it's just saying this is an egg. This is an egg. Right. And then yeah. we have this over here, and it's just a little bit different. So try this again. Hadihi. Hazihi Bayzatul Kabira. Very good. Very good. So here how yes, the, the thing I was looking for was the bumba, and you did that. Right? We have now all we've done is we've taken this bayba and we've shifted it over into the mubtada. We've added it to the mubtada, the subject of the sentence, and now we're going to say something different about it. So what are we going to say about it? Kabiratun, just as brother said. Good job. Okay. Anybody need to see anything here before I erase all this? I think we're good. I think there's, there's still some more down here. Let's see. So we've got two left. Sister. Oh, is Sister Erum there today or no? No, she is not. Okay. No problem. Uh, Sister Sema, could you please do number nine? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I'm trying. Um, Hada Mindi Lun. Good. Okay. Hada Mindi Lun. Hada Mindi Lu. Hada Mindi Lu. Wasi Khun. Yes. Great job. That's perfect. Can you, you know, translate that for us, if you would? Yes, Hada Mindilu. This is a kerchief, and Hadal Mindilu Wasikun. This kerchief is dirty. Fantastic, mashallah. Very, very good. And if any of you have um, realized, there's different ways to write Alif Lam Mim. Okay, so this is the kind of beginner's way. And if you're looking for a fancy way, you can loop the Mim right underneath the the Lam. That's the Lam. That's the Mim. So that's what I did here. Um, and number 10, brother to me. Uh, hadihi haqibatun. And then, um, hadihil haqibat, hadihil haqibatu lil mudarrisin. Very good. Translate that for us. Um, Haqiba. I'm not remembering what Hakiba means, but whatever Hakiba is belongs to this. <laughs> <laughs> Good. It's a, bag. it's a bag. Okay, bag. Good. So over here, so what does this sentence mean over here in the in the example? Uh, this is a bag. Good. And then what's the difference in meaning over here? Uh, it, this is the uh, student's bag. Yes. Or mudarris. Uh, mudarris says. Oh, teacher. Sorry, this is the teacher's bag. Good, good. So, hil hafibatu lil mudarrisi. And I think that you joined us late, and so um, we talked about how we're joining a lamb. Before, if we had joined lamb, to, lamb the lamb mulkiya, to a proper name like Muhammad, it's very obvious it becomes li Muhammadin. But if we're going to join it to a common noun, such as uh, in this case, mudarrisi, el mudarrisi. What ends up happening is that we erase, we delete the hamzat al wasl and we write two lambs next to each other. Okay. Someone had asked if that's even in the Quran. Yes, that's even in the Quran. Um, and so it is that lamb. The first lamb is possessive, the second lamb with a sukun is our sign that it is definite. 
al mudarrisi lil mudarrisi, which means that there's only going to be one kasba on it. Okay. So this bag is the teacher. Fantastic. Hadihi al haqibatu lil mudarrisi. Great job, everybody. Any questions on this particular exercise before we continue? Um, I have a question, but it's not about the exercise. So I know in Alhamdulillah that it's written uh, without the alif, uh, but I'm just wondering. I guess I guess then you you can you can never separate it, right? When, like if you start on that word, you have to start with the lam, and that's why it's joined like that. Are we talking about Alhamdulillah? No, I mean I, in in Alhamdulillah, I know that there's no uh, there's no Hamzatul Wasil there. It's not, uh, it's Sorry? No, I mean in the in the in the end, in the in the lilla part. Oh lilla, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because okay. I'm thinking of this lam and the Right, right, right. I see, I see. Right. Um, so I so I guess the reason it's not there is because you can never you, you like if you if you um stop, like if you if you lose your breath, you still need to start with the lam. That's why it's correct. Okay. Yeah. Yes, that's a good point. Yes, Allah. So the sister is trying to tell us that the na the, the name Allah. Begins with Alhamdulillah Wasl, right? Allah. And yet, if we have Lilla, huh? same thing. The, uh, oh man, mashallah. So this touches on the other difference of opinion, Sister Masarrat. Look at how this is evidence for the camp that this actually was Alif Lam because the Alhamdulillah Wasl disappears. Yes, yeah, Salam. Look at that. So we've touched on two uh, ancient points of disagreement between the grammarians, and we've stumbled upon evidence for uh, for each issue. Good, excellent. Anybody? Any other question? Okay, let's roll. اقرأ المثال الآتي ثم كون أسئلة وأجوبة مثله. Make questions and answers, as shown in the example using the word لمن. Whose? So the example here, لمن هذا الكتاب. Ah, this is a perfect example of what we said before. When we're Asking questions, don't get confused about the type of sentence that's actually going on. This is the same exact sentence we just dealt with, right? It's a jumla ismiya. The mubtada is had al kitabu. But what happens in Arabic is the piece of information that you're asking about gets put to the front when you're asking a question. So we're not asking ma hadha. We're asking Liman, whose is it? Which is part of the khabar. And so we're gonna shoot it up front. Liman had al kitabu. And the answer is now kind of rearranged in the quote unquote proper order of our normal our normal jumla ismiya, had al kitabu li Muhammadin. What they're going to do, they're going to give you in parentheses the correct uh, owner of the thing that we're talking about. Sometimes it's going to be a proper name, Muhammad Abbas Ali. Sometimes it's going to be a common noun, Al-Mudir, Al-Fallah. And so you're going to have to use what we just learned about the Lam, al mukia appropriately. I'll leave the example right there at the top. Uh, okay, starting at the top, we have Sister Masarrat. Can you be number one for us? Uh, so not the khalam, the next one, right? Yes. I'm oh, yeah. sorry, the khalam. Liman liman hadha al-qalam. Hadha al-qalam li Abbasin. Good, fantastic. That's exactly what we're looking for. Notice that you're going to have to make decisions about gender, right? She had to pick hadha because qalam is masculine. And so if it had been a feminine one, she's going to have to say, Liman hadihi, right? But she knew that it was uh, masculine. And I probably don't need to write all of your answers. Uh, going to the Sheikh family for number two. 
Liman has a Nifaku. Very good. Hazal Niftahu Lim Aliyun Li Ali Li Aliyun Ali Li Aliyun Ali Ali Aliyun Sorry Yes Good Ali Normally is Aliyun And it can be Aliyun And it can even be Again, depending on what's going on. Good job. Yeah, exactly. The same. Okay. And now, number three, Sister Asma. Liman has he sayara tu. Um, has he sayara tu. Li uh, mudiri. Good. Lil mudiri. Yeah, lil mudiri. Right. That that kind of funny thing that we stumbled over because it is new to us. We haven't learned that before. Lil Mudir. Very good. Okay, Brother Muhammad Tara, could you do number four? Brother Muhammad Tara, are you there? Yeah, sorry, I, I didn't can more. Okay, so Bakara is female. Correct. So, Liman Hazihi Bakaratun. Very good, mashallah. Excellent. Hazihi Bakaratun Fallahi. Good, you're just missing one letter in the answer. Hazihi Bakaratu. Hazihi Bakaratun Fallahi. Bakaratu lil fallahi. Yeah, there you go, mashallah. Excellent, perfect. Hadihil baqaratu. And all the dhammas are right completely. Lil fallahi. And we're going to mush it together there because the hamzatul wasl disappears. Belong to the farmer. Lil fallahi. Very good. Yes, you're correct, Sister Sam. Okay, moving right along. Excellent job, everybody. You're synthesizing and putting it all together. Next four down to Sister Samuel. Number five, please. Uh, it is uh, Hakiba. Yes. Is... Yep. Okay. Liman uh, Hadi Hill. Liman Hadi Hill. Hakiba too. Hadi Hill Hakiba to Lil Mudarisi. Fantastic, mashallah. I like how you took your time and you pronounced everything so slowly and clearly. Very good. Uh, number six, next on our list is Brother Tamim. Uh, Liman Hadi Hill Kursi. Uh, sorry, no, Liman had al Kursiu. Mashallah, good job. Uh, had al Kursiu, uh, Lil Ammar, Lil Ammarin. Good, good. Now, we have to be careful not to over apply what we just learned with the common noun. If we have a common noun, it's going to be Lil, right? But if we have a uh, okay. noun, it's just going to be Lil Ammarin. That's right. And it's so funny. Forgive me for smiling, but uh, we had just talked last night, Brother Musan and I, about uh, how in Urdu, apparently kursi is feminine. Is that correct? So this is, I guess, uh, a point of confusion for the Urdu speakers because in Arabic, it's masculine. And so you notice how Brother Tamim started saying hadihi, perhaps because in his mind somewhere, he knew that uh, in Urdu, it was, it was feminine. So that's, that's a very interesting point to me. Good job. Uh, moving on to the Sayyids. Someone from the Sayyid family, do number seven, please. Okay. Uh, okay. I think that's supposed to be a hen, right? 
and not a, a rooster. I think that's the intent. You are muted. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. It's uh, li li had he the uh, done. Very good. Man, had he had he the jaja tun. The jaja tun. Good. And then the uh, or had he? I I I misspoke. Had he the jaja too. Because it has to have Ali plan. Then it's going to be uh, ha, ha the hill, the the da, uh, the jaja, tol be bin bin tol fadi good. This is way harder than the previous examples that we had. So sorry about that. But yes, yes. Okay, so let's let's break it down here. So havihi, yes, havihi dajajatu, good. Li, and then we have bint, and then you recognize that bint and falah are part of a possessive construction. So listen to how she made al falahi. Yes, that was completely correct. Al-Falahi. But we also have one other thing to consider. And that is, what's the work that the lamb does upon bint? <laughs> lamb is going to change this dhamma to a kasra. Right? Because lamb is one of the uh, jab. It's one of the uh, prepositions. So it would end up being tu li Bin til falahi. Does everybody understand why? Does everybody see how that happens? Hadihi is fixed. Ad-dajaja too. This is all part of the muqtada. It's marfu'a. Right? Okay. Now we're moving on to the khabar. We have three things to consider. First, we know it's going to be possessed by a what is in itself a possessive construction. Bintul falahi is a possessive construction. Now we're going to add lamb to the beginning of that possessive construction. So it makes the second part, bint, changes it from being marfu' to majroor. Li bintil falahi. Does anyone have any questions about that? That was significantly more difficult <laughs> than the, the previous examples. Ratcheted up that uh, level of difficulty there. But is it clear? Possession. Oh. OK. Uh, number eight, Brother Muxin. Uh, answer is Mudiri. Okay, where's your Lee? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> I I know exactly. You were you were you saw that Hamza Talwasal and you were getting ready for it, and that's good. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, lil so, no. Uh, I don't know how good. to say this. Um, good, good, good. Let's break it down one one more time. So we have Hadihi Sa'atu. Okay. Now we have, this is the khabar. So that's the end of the Muqtada, beginning of the khabar. Okay, what are we going to do? We're going to add a lamp to Ibn. Now, the question we have to ask ourselves is, this Hamza right here, is it Hamza al qata or is it Hamza al wasl Meaning, is it going to be, is it going to stay? Do we pronounce it independently or are we going to delete it? Just like we had deleted it for Lil Mudarrisi. Probably delete it. We're going to delete it. So what we're going to have is, oh, well, actually, okay. 
we're not technically going to delete it, but that's uh, but we're not going to say it. And I'll explain why in a second. Libni is essentially the same thing as the previous example where we have a possessive construction that is the entire chabad, and then we're adding a lamb to it. Okay? So because we're adding a lamb to it, now we're making both parts majrur. Libni al-mudir. Libni al And we do not pronounce the we do not pronounce it because it is a comes to us. Now the question arises. Okay. How come we got rid of the Hamza Tulwasal up here when we had Alif Lam, but we didn't get rid of it down here when it was just an Alif by itself? And this is just a point of, oh, yes, Mr. Masara, you have a response? Um, it's part of the word. Yes, very good. Meaning that Ibn is part of the word itself and not and not just something that's placed in there, according to the opinion of Sibawe, in order to break up the lamp. So we have another uh, evidence in the cap of uh, Sibawe. So the rule is, if you're looking for the rule, if you have alif lam, which is the definite article, the, and you're adding a, an, a lam to it for possessive, you're going to get lil, you're, and you're going to delete the hamzat al However, if you have a different type of word that does not have that lam, like ibn, you are not going to delete the Hamza Tawassal, though you're still not going to say it. Libni al-Mudiri. That's a bit complicated. Does anyone have any questions about that or want me to review it or explain it again in a different way? But the similar thing won't apply to Bintu because it's it's not there is no Correct. Uh, Hamza Tawassal. Exactly. Bint has no Hamza Tawassal. So Lam does the same grammatical work to Bint as it does to Ibn, but it has nothing to do with adding or deleting letters or whether we pronounce letters or not. Lam being part of a possessive construction itself makes the noun that follows it majrul, libni, libinti. But Bint is a nice and easy word to pronounce. It has no hamza to wassel, whereas Ibn is more difficult to pronounce because it has to adhere to the rules of Hamza Tawassal. So Good. the only thing you do uh, Lam and Hamza is Hamza Tawassal. Sorry, state your question again. So the only place we would use uh, Lam and uh, Hamza or Hamza Tawassal, the way we are saying in Mudiri, is where there is uh, Hamza Tawassal. If there is no Hamza al-Vasl, the Lam itself either lil or attached to the word. Yes, yes, correct. If I've understood you, then correct. <clears throat> now, note that there could be a possibility that it is used where there is a definite article. Yes, that's probably the easiest way of conceptualizing it, wherever there's a, de a definite article. And I won't add any exceptions or anything like that. That's good enough for understanding. لِمَنْ هَذِهِ السَّاعَةُ هَذِهِ السَّاعَةُ لِبْنِ الْمُدِيرِ Good. Nearing the end of class, and we just have two more, so we'll finish this exercise, and then, inshallah, we will complete class. Yes, and there's more exercise for next class. Oh, uh, where are we at here, brother? Oh, my list got scrambled around. Brother Muhammad Mu'attasim, can you please do number nine? Liman Hazal Baitu. Very good. Hazal Hazal Bay Hazal Baitu Hazal Baitu. Yes. Yes. So now look at what they did to you. 
They have no respect for your uh, gradual development. They're going to throw it all at you. Now, what we have is we have an added wrinkle here. Not only is it a lamb plus alif lamb, so we're going to delete the harf for wassel. Now we also have to do with us deal with a sun letter, a thought. So we're not even going to pronounce this lamb lit abibi. Mm. which uh, Brother Muhammad, he dealt with very well, because that's not uh, easy. This is about as difficult as it gets when it comes to using the lamb. The thought will be doubled because, or I should say, to indicate the assimilation of the lamb into the thought. And the first lamb has its custom. And last one, Brother Awesome, can you do number 10 for us? Liman hadi hil milakatu, hadi hil milakatu lit talibi. Very good. And the same exact thing, they've saved the most difficult ones for last. Lit talibi. You have those three things going on. You're adding lamb to a definite article, alif lamb. And so you're getting two lambs written next to each other without the Hamza. <laughs> yes, must be culinary school. That's, that's very true. But the following letter is a harp shamsi, is a sun letter. And so we're going to double it. We're going to assimilate that second lamb into that sun letter. Fantastic. Anyone, any final questions before we conclude for today? Okay, everybody is doing a fantastic job. Very, very pleased with your progress and your effort. And inshallah, we will see you next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa